we'll be talking about business and personal systems combined on this call uh, so we can scale our businesses through our personal systems and jam out on that. Nick and I will share our own stories around that and why having personal systems are so important to uh, growing our businesses. Um, first off, I want to introduce this amazing dude next to me, um, Nick Robbins. So he's done over $14 million in revenue between agency and coaching. Um, he's been in the game for seven years uh, in the agency and coaching space. And he's directly coached over a hundred clients, mainly with agency and mindset. He's a big mindset, dude. Uh, he's a cousin of Tony Robbins, I believe. Um, Uncle T. <laughs> <laughs> That's not true. Yeah. Uh, but uh, uh, really into mindset and personal development. Um, also, he was one of the original founding fathers for Masters of Faith Brotherhood um, and wanted to bring him on to talk about uh, personal development, mindset, and systems around that. So thanks for being here, man. So excited to be here with all you guys. Oh, yeah. Uh, so I would love to start off with um, wins that you guys have gotten from going through the five-day challenge. Maybe something came up when you were developing your values or something uh, sparked when you were creating your vision or getting clear skill sets and any little win or big win uh, that has come over the past week from going through the training programs or the videos. And you can either hop off mute or you can drop it in the chat. I know Michael has a little something something. Josh's beard has grown so much since last week. That could be the win. Yeah, I'll go ahead and jump in. Um, yeah, for me, man, it's uh, it's very, it's very enlightening to see like how we work as human beings because as I started to get a lot more organized with my personal life, I literally just, it's crazy. The translation I, I saw, I can see how much now I want to really get organized with the business side of things too. And they, they, they very much go hand in hand. Um, so it's like, and it almost, and it makes me realize too, like, well, like if I was, you know, I'm not going to say like I was crazy disorganized in my personal life, but where I was, was a reflection of where my business was. So now that I have personal systems, you know, to manage my life and I can, and the cool part is with Airtable, it's like, you can just literally translate it to your business. Um, I notice I have more ease. I have more flow, more productivity in my day to day. Um, and it just, yeah, man, it's just, it's, I, I'm feeling a lot more in flow and alignment. I think and that's like, that's a, that's a really big thing for me. Cause I think as entrepreneurs, we, um, you know, sometimes we're really in the, like the grind and the hustle, which obviously there's seasons for that. But I think with these systems too, it also allows for that productivity to open up that, um, that, that creative flow to open up without all these open tabs in my mind, like, oh shit, I got to do this. Oh, I got to do that. Or I got to do this because I have it all in one place. So just want to say thank you, Andrew, um, for introducing me to Airtable. Cause like on hands down has been a game changer for me. And um, yeah, I can't thank you enough, man. So I appreciate it. Dude, thanks for jumping into it. And I'm curious, what was the section that stood out to you the most? That was the most helpful. Um, honestly, I think for me, it's like be, the being able to build out like your, your different areas of life in on the tabs to the top. So like being able to organize it by like journal, vision, values, purpose, because then you translate that into your business, you could do the same vision, values, purpose, to do's you know, your, your projects. And for me, like, I can't really separate my business life and my personal life. Like they're very integrated. So mm -hmm. this allows me to integrate both now seamlessly without having to like jump from personal life to like, Oh, jump into my business life. Like, yes, they're separate, but they're also integrated as well. So that's kind of like, what's been the biggest takeaway for me is like being able to have that bird's eye view and then being able to go deeper into each vertical you know, when I need to, um, you know, when it's appropriate. So mm, I love that. Who else feels like their business life is so integrated with their personal life? <laughs> kind of just happen. Yes. I mean, um, I love that, dude. Um, and just getting more clarity around our own personal systems so that we can be better with our business systems is so important. I love it. 
Josh in the chat dropped, uh, it helped me get clear by going through my values, goals to see where my blind spots are at and identify them to start working on them, um, especially my finances and relationships. Josh, I love that. Um, and for, for me, I had been outward for so long, just looking outward, looking outward, and just like looking at client results and looking at what I need to do in the marketplace and looking at finances coming in, but didn't take the time to go inward and find those blind spots, um, which has helped me develop so much over the past year and my happiness and, uh, and just how I show up for people and my own personal growth. So I love that that was your takeaway, Josh. Thanks for sharing. All right. And guys, celebrate yourselves. Mm -hmm. The best way to build momentum is looking back at our wins um, and reflecting on those. So we're looking at the gain of what we've done in our life in the past uh, instead of the gap of where we're at and where we're going in the future. So <clears throat> if you guys have anything that pops up along the way in terms of wins, feel free to pop them in the chat. Um, and uh, Nick, I would love for you to kick this off with your own experience with building your business and diving into more personal systems and your personal development along the way. Yeah, definitely. So how are you guys doing? You guys good? Ready to go? Everyone sit up straight. You learn better when you are in a good state and it literally makes you so much easier to you know, take in taking knowledge. So first of all, I want to acknowledge every single one of you for going through this process, doing the work, thinking about your values, your vision, realizing there's something more to life. And this is a particular soft spot for me because as I was starting in business, it was a real struggle, right? Some of you guys might be there. How many of you guys are, you know, still, you know, depending on, you know, anybody in, in struggles right now with business, anyone struggling with certain aspects of it, growth? Or is everything I'll help you do it? Everyone, right? So <laughs> basically it was a real struggle. In fact, it took me actually an entire year to get my first client, literally an entire year. And it wasn't until I sat down and I started realizing and thinking through this idea of why is my behavior not aligning with my intention? So I'm gonna ask you guys a question. And I want you guys to be honest, put a one in the chat box. Have you guys ever set out told yourself that you are going to do something. You're going to do the work. You're going to do the prospect. You're going to reach out to the girl, whatever it might be. And then not actually done the intention that you had. Has anyone ever done that before? Has it happened to people, right? This misalignment between behavior and intention became an obsession of mine over years, right? Because we all have the best intentions. We want to do things. We want the big outcomes. We want to be here, right? And I kept asking myself, like, what, what am I missing? What's going on, right? Like, what's happening here? And then I started realizing and digging deep into the, the vision, mission, value side of things. And I realized that behavior is downstream of vision, right? And so like, I wasn't connected to it. I was just taking action to take action. I had no idea where I was going or what I wanted to do or how I wanted life to look. And so once I got clear on like who I wanted to become, uber clear on my vision, started writing down my values. I will do this. I will not do this. I'm the type of person who reaches out. I'm the type of person who stands up confidently and stands tall, reaches out to prospects, sales calls. Then my behavior started to match up with my intentions and the outcomes started to explode, right? And it was amazing how I was able to close that gap because most people try and modify behavior by just willing themselves into it without doing deep work, without thinking about questions and unique angles, right? And I want to applaud Raul. Thank you so much for sharing what you shared. Because as my evolution, as my journey continued, I started to realize, I started seeing some success, right? We started hitting some good numbers, things like that. But then I started to realize that there were issues in my business that were also issues in my personal life. And so I think it's so cool that you actually stated the idea of them being intertwined, because I think there's an enormous fallacy out there, especially with entrepreneurship, where they're like, I just want work-life balance. I just, you know, want to work when I work in life. It's like, good luck when you've got like overhead and employees and you got to pay for your bills, all that stuff. So the goal is to integrate the two in a way that become, uh, you know, mag you're just magnifying. So you can actually be excited both places, right? And so as my business actually went and grew, there's another situation. I had done the vision, values, mission type stuff, right? And I really thought through my behaviors and started changing. But then it got to a point where everything felt like I was pushing. Right. Anybody ever feel like they're just pushing uphill, like you're not being pulled, like you don't have like like you want to be in a situation where you're being pulled. And this was actually within the last year or two. 
And this is when, you know, I've known Andrew for several years now, but we started talking about this stuff golfing, you know, last summer, a year and a half ago. And I started realizing I was just pushing the whole time. And Andrew was talking a lot about vision, mission, because he has his own story that he's going to share. And I realized that it had been so long since I doubled down on what am I actually working towards, right? And why? And what are the values I had? Because I kind of lost those. Has anybody, let me know if anybody can relate to this, right? As an entrepreneur, as a human, you just want more. Does everybody just want more? More revenue, more employees, more clients, more this, more that, blah, 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 blah. What I came to realize as I was like doubling down on rethinking through my vision and working with Andrew and inside his program over the last year was that more is just more, right? More is not better. What we want to do is get closer to our goals, right? Closer to where we want to go. And the only way we can know that is if we do this work, if we think about the values, we think about the challenges, all this stuff, right? Now, I know the title of this, you know, this live was like the systems, but honestly, it all starts with your personal side because you are the, 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 the catalyst, especially up to the zero to, you know, 10, five, 10 million dollar range. And so over the last year, I really started doubling down on all of these things again. And I started thinking through, what do I want my life to look like? Like I achieved a lot of those initial vision and goals, which I'm very proud of and never would have got to without them in the first place. But I'm like, what's the next level? And I kept just trying to add more and more. And I realized this isn't what I want. I actually want to move closer. And so on that note, over the last eight months, I've actually exited a business as of three weeks ago. And six months ago, I had actually rolled down and I recently sold that business, but it was, you know, it, it was more of a, just, it wasn't like a huge exit or anything, but I had unwound two businesses in order to realize like, you know what, I need to double down on what's my vision, what's my mission, what's my purpose, what are my values? And so as I was going and working back through these things, it allowed me to literally figure out the next steps that I wanted to move to in life. And with that, what's amazing is over the last six, seven months, I've made more money. I have a better relationship with my wife, which is incredibly important to me right? A better relationship with myself. I started doing the things that I love again, because halfway through pandemic to 2021 was miserable for me, just absolutely miserable. I was just grinding, pushing all of that stuff. And while there were results, I was starting to feel like just burnt out, just like tired. And I couldn't really figure out why until I slowed down, thought about where I wanted to go, what I wanted to do, and then had a system in place in order to actually follow those values, right? Because it's one thing to write down this work and do it one time. But I got a question, how many of you guys have ever been to the gym one time and then not gone back or eaten healthy for a meal and not gone back, right? So then it was about finding accountability and really just doubling down on the process with it. And so at multiple times over the last seven years, having access to these things has been absolutely critical. And I'm so thankful for uh, Andrew talking to me on the golf course about founding fathers at the time. And he inspired me with, with, you know, his vision for what this, um, what mass phase, what he's doing with his life at this point. Right. And I'm like, shit, man, I want to do something that I want to do with life, you know? And so like that re-sparked the energy and all this talk about it. So like when it comes to business and getting moving, everything comes down to you because what your actions are going to do is going to deliver the outcomes. And if your actions are not aligned with what you want, it's because of something that's going on internally. Right. And I'll give you guys an example of this. Okay, so I'm not here to blow all, I'm not a woo-woo, sunshine and rainbows, blow smoke up your ass type of guy. I believe in some of that stuff, but like in general, action is what gets the results. And if you are hating a certain action or hating a certain thing, whether it's prospecting, whether it's reaching out, whether it's reaching out to whatever it is in life that we fear, we need to have a strong vision to realize whether or not, hey, is this aligned with my vision? I'm just running into a fear or is this completely taking me away from where I want to go? And you can only know that if you've got the vision right? Because I'm not here to sit here to tell you everything's all fun and sunshine and rainbows and business. It's not. But if you have the right vision, you have the right outcome, you have the right values in place, it will give you that energy, especially if you look at it regularly and you're accountable with it, to go out there and take, do the action, do the results in order to need to get there, right? Like I'll give you guys an example. I strongly dislike rules, SOPs, things of that nature. It's not my nature. I'm a creative guy. I'm a sales guy. I'm a visionary. I'm, I like to do webinars and talk. But in order to get my business to the point where I was able to exit over the last year, I had to sit down and put enormous amounts of systems in place, SOP, sales systems, hiring reps, hiring funnels, things that are not in my nature to love to do. And at first I resisted it heavily. And it wasn't until I sat back, thought about, okay, the only way I'm ever going to be able to exit and remove myself from this business is if I install these things, then bam, it gave me the energy, right? And if there was ever a moment or a morning where I woke up, I was like, man, I don't want to do what I'm, 
I would go back and look at my, my vision and I was like, holy shit. All right, let's go. You know, I changed the state and just get after it. Right. And that was what was so valuable to them. The, the app, right? Like this app has just been so life changing for me. So Ralph, thank you so much for, for sharing, you know, how much it had on you because like those little tabs in there can make life changing things, whether it's to do vision, whatever for each person it might be a little bit different depending on where you're at. And so I learned to love this thing, even though, to be honest with you guys, I'm someone who is not inclined to be in systems or organization, but having everything out there, having it right there in front of me, being able to remind myself, like was absolutely critical, you know, in order to go through. And then over time, it kind of adjusts all that stuff. So I just wanted to share a quick stories on that. And we can, I can answer any questions too, towards the end on anything there, but like, I just want to applaud you guys so much because this is the key to getting to that next level. If you ever find yourself pushing, pulling, not able to get where you are, your behavior is not lining up, your regrets, things like that. It's because we got to do the deep work and we get, and you guys have started that journey. So um, I cannot, uh, I applaud all of you guys so much for, for being here and going down that path. Cause I promise you it's a life-changing path that you guys are on. Mm -hmm. yeah. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. I have, a, I have a pretty similar story where uh, if you think about Tony Robbins quote, I don't know if it started with him or somebody else, but um, uh, success without fulfillment is the ultimate failure. And last year I got to that point where I had a lot of success, but I didn't have fulfillment. And it was because I had a vision for my business. I had values for my business. I had systems for my business. And that was my North Star, but I didn't have them for my own personal life. I didn't have a life vision. I didn't have uh, values. I didn't have personal operating systems. And what I found is with developing those, I'm striving for uh, fulfillment in all areas of life instead of su just success in business. And my energy has been so much better because it's more well-rounded and I'm not burning myself out on the things that I don't like to do and just focusing on business and all of that. Um, <clears throat> so uh, yeah, don't get to that point. Use these systems and, and jump into that. Um, and one thing that I've also found is that everything, like I'm more lit up by masters of fate. And that's why I'm able to wake up at 530 in the morning and jump out of bed and start working on this business because it's my own unique story. So in helping people that are 1.0, 2.0 versions of me and helping them uh, get to the next level. Um, <clears throat> and that kind of goes into the mix between personal systems and business systems. Like when we better understand ourselves, we can better create offers in our business and articulate our offers. Um, so the more we do the deep work internally, that manifests in our business to have our own unique selling points in the marketplace. Mm -hmm. So going inwards and developing the personal systems first and then letting that uh, move over to our business systems around our offers, around our marketing, around our sales and how we're actually communicating our own offers to our potential clients i got something i want to i want to add there in regards to building clarity and utilizing the app specifically that's helped me uh give me a one if you guys have ever been overwhelmed by the amount of opportunities in the space right ecom TikTok, this that linkedin blah, 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 vision blah, 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 right and if you have your vision on point it allows you to put those blinders on because i tell so many people the one of the biggest issues that we'll run into and this is honestly at any level of business but it especially applies to getting really getting really moving is tunnel vision ignoring other outside opportunities dedicating yourself to a specific thing right and so it allows you if you're reminding yourself what your vision is i'm going to be the best xyz we're going to serve these people in the highest way it allows you to ignore all the shouting and the nonsense that goes on in the space and it gives you a place where you can just actually store it outside of your brain. So that way you don't have to worry about it inside, right? Because we all are just, just getting bombarded with thoughts left and right, right? And let me give you guys a, a, an example, a personal example of one of my values and a decision that I made not to do because of it, right? So let's say that my, my vision or my values is spending more time with my, my wife, right? I want to make sure that I'm able to spend time with her in the evening, walks, things like that. And in order to hit that, I wanted to make more money or do what, whatever, right? And it, by knowing my values in that particular instance, like there was an option where it's like I could hire an executive assistant and hire five more salespeople and bring in more revenue and do all this stuff. And then maybe in two years, I'll have more money, right? But like if anyone, anyone here have employees, give me one if you guys have employees, right? 
let's just say that if you have an employees, like it takes up enormous amounts more time, right? You're getting way farther away from your actual goal. It's diametrically opposed to what my actual values were and what I wanted out of life. And so it's just so amazing to have those because it can help you say yes or no to opportunities in the business world, especially, right? So that, that reminded me of what I, ways that I've utilized the app to just really stay tunnel vision, stay clear, right? Because most people are walking around aimlessly. We're just wanting more. We have no idea what more is. We have no idea if we're actually getting closer to our goals or further away. And it's because we haven't sat down and thought about this stuff. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Agreed. And going to the values point, um, we have a brother, uh, Matt Young, uh, who developed his um, values with me in Guatemala. I did a workshop there and he just created a new business where he uh, brings together remote teams in an exotic location for an entire month. Really cool business, but he had to create a new vision and new values for his business. And he reached out to me. He's like, dude, that was the easiest thing that I could have done because I already had my own personal vision and I had my own personal values and I just adopted that over to my business. So knowing what we really want in our lives and where we really wanna go um, will allow us to align our businesses with who we are at our core and we'll feel so much better doing it. Uh, yeah. yeah. No, it's, uh, it, I, I love it. The, the amount of times that I've looked at my values. So like, I'll give you guys another just quick example. Anybody will like these examples. Give me one if you guys like the examples of how the value actually relates to, to life, right? Because sometimes it can be an esoteric, esoteric concept, but we want to take it from like theory to practice to actual application. So my number one lifestyle value is energy. Right. If you guys can tell, I got a lot of energy all the time, a little too much for Andrew sometimes. Right. But, you know, it's I got so much energy. And the reason why is because everything I do in my life, I ask the question, is this going to support or take away from my energy, including the food that I eat? Because guess what? This, this actually leads to a multiplicative effect. Right. It allows me to eat better food because I look at the, you know, I love chicken strips and chicken nuggets. Like it is my all time favorite, but I eat Popeyes and I'm like, you know, I can't move. Right. So I, it helps me with the fitness side of things. It helps me with the fit or uh, the health side of things. Uh, it helps me with what time I go to bed. Right. So I don't stay up too late because I know I need to get up at a certain time. So there's so many decisions that are just made because I've already established my number one value life is energy. And I will only do things that support or align with increasing of energy. Right. If I'm ever thinking, oh, I just have a couple beers or a couple drinks or whatever. Nope. I'll be a little bit tired the next day. I don't want to be tired. My number one value is energy. It's a reminder for me as well. So that's another example of just like taking it from like theory to application. Mm -hmm. And like lifestyle values, mine are community connection, philosophizing, travel and family. And how I've set up Masters of Fate is I build a community. I get to go deep with the brothers. I get to think deeply about subjects and create my own frameworks and all of that. We have multiple meetups per year. So I get to travel a bunch and meet with these brothers. We just did one in San Diego that was incredible, 30 guys. Um, and uh, family I identify as building my future family, the man, uh, building the man who I'm meant to become to attract that partner who I'm supposed to be with and build that family with. So like inside of my business, it aligns perfectly with the things that light me up the most. Um, so once we have our lifestyle values, then we can build our life around those values and we understand what lights us up. And um, also I was in Mexico city for three months and I started to feel like a little off and I was like, Oh, it's my uh, value of travel. I haven't traveled in a little bit. I traveled from Mexico city to Encinitas and boom, I felt instantly better. Um, and when we have those reminders and go back to those values every single day, uh, I have a journal every single day where I review my values and I get to pick one that I want to live by and, uh, and really nail in that day, whether it's community connection, philosophizing, travel or family or uh, grounded, inspiring, interested with character values or like be your word with operational values. So I'm constantly being reminded of my values and I'm able to review those and see where I'm out of alignment and why I might feel off once I have, like, once I created those, I'm like, oh, this is it. This is at the core of where I feel the most love and joy and in alignment. And then reviewing those allows us to see right away, oh, I'm out of alignment in this. And then you can instantly pivot and be like, oh, that's what I want to fix. That's what I want to fix. Yeah. And, and on that note, uh, man, so many good things just, just keep popping up with, with the I'm just so excited to be here with you guys. So how many of you guys have heard the term identity? Identity matters. You behave in accordance with your identity, right? Again, this 
same exact thing. That's what we're talking about here. But most people don't sit down to write out what that means. Most human beings, from my experience, and I've been here, right? So like, and let me know if you guys can relate to this. We know we want something different, but we don't know what the hell it is, right? We just know we don't want to be here, right? But the truth is, wherever you go, there you are. And so it's so important to be intentional about who you're becoming. And it can only be done through actually sitting down and crystallizing these things and making sure that you're hitting, am I hitting these values? Am I living these types of things? And then you can go back, like Andrew said, if you're ever feeling out of alignment, just go back up, look at it, right? Oh man, something's off. There must be something missing from my operating system that I wanted to deploy for myself. Cause life happens. We get away, maybe stop looking at it for a little bit, whatever, right? Stuff happens. But then, you know, you've got a trigger when you feel that inside of you to go back, review these things. And maybe you need to update some too. Maybe something needs to change. That's okay. This is, this is a moving target. But first we have something that we're optimizing for because most humans don't have anything that we're optimizing for. We just know we want something different. We want something more. And this is that first step in order to actually get to that get to that place where you can step in the identity of the individual who you want to become. Mm -hmm. I love that. And, and we talked about uh, creating our values, creating our vision, and then identifying the skill sets that we need to develop mastery in to get from where we're at to where we want to go. And like inside of the app that you're given, you identify what skill sets that you need to develop and when you need to, or when you want to develop them. So if you have a gap around offer creation, we'll get better at creating offers, or you have a gap around closing sales and we'll get better at sales. Then you put it in there and you can tie all of the, um, all of the knowledge, all of your courses, all YouTube videos, all SOPs under the knowledge tab. And it connects perfectly with, um, uh, with the skill sets tab. So you have all your notes in one place for uh, developing that skill set. So it just, for me, it's sped up how quickly I can develop skill sets when I have a second brain all in one place of, because I used to have like, how many of you guys have like Google documents all over the place, like everything in your notes and all that. Like when we centralize the data and keep it all in one place and are constantly reviewing that data, we become that. We create new neural pathways in our brain to actually take the action and move it forward instead of when it's all spread out all over the place. So just identifying those skill sets that you want to grow in business, putting it in there, and then uh, going to YouTube, getting your courses in there, and then having all your notes in one place will develop those skill sets so much quicker. Yeah. I got a lot of my good share, but yeah, any, any questions at this point? Um, I'm, I'm happy to answer yeah, any questions or if there's anything else you wanna, wanna chat about. But one thing I'll say on the knowledge side of things is, and I'll ask a question, right? How many of you guys have had a YouTube tab open and been like, yo, I'll get to that later. I'll, I'll watch that, it'll be up, right? And then you never watch it, you know? And so that one of my big things was now I've just got a spot to be able to place them and put them all in, right? And I can go back and then if I ever have an opportunity or when I have my learning time, which because one of my values is learning, always constant, never ending improvement is one of my values. It's can I, it's an old Japanese. And so then I wanna have my can I time, I go in and I look at the knowledge tab and I get very intentional where I've got and what I wanna watch, right? So that's just one example. And that in turn makes me better at business, right? So like, if we wanna make more money, it all stems from our behaviors and our actions. I know I've said it like three times, but that's the truth. And so the goal needs to be improving our actions and modifying and aligning, aligning our behavior with the intentions that we have, the actions we know we should be doing. That's the only way you're ever gonna get the outcomes you want. And it starts with just having systems and operating systems around this stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there was um, <clears throat> one thing that I wanna bring up. There was a moment uh, towards the end of Tribe Buyers, I think this was December of 20, 2020, and it was 10 months, uh, so, we were going through COVID and I was scaling tribe of buyers really hard. And I had stopped showing up to coaching calls, stopped showing up to masterminds that I joined and I've joined over $500,000 of coaching programs and masterminds. And I stopped working with um, energy coaches that I used to work with. And Brad, uh, Brad Newman, who's our sales um, rep, came to one of our team calls and was like, dude, like you need to slow down and you need to get a coach and you need somebody to talk to. So like I was so broken and I was just like going, 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 drinking so much coffee and just thinking, oh, when I get to this point, I can mm -hmm. slow down. 
And have, has anybody felt that way where it's like, you're just going, going, going. And then uh, if I get to this point, I could finally slow down. And um, then I completely burnt out a month later and I didn't listen to him. So in addition to the systems, it's so important to have the, the community around you and co investing into coaches or communities or masterminds where people are there to support you with your energy as well and hold you accountable to not just business growth, but also your own personal growth and your energy. And that was a big reason why I started Masters of Fate and uh, why it's not solely focused on business, that it's focused on the internal work and having brothers hold each other accountable so they're not just, they don't burn out like I did. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and, and one thing I'll note on that too, is I've spent about $487,000 on masterminds. I actually just calculated. That's why I know the number because I was curious. And my ROI on that has been absolutely, it, it's been better than I could have ever you know, dreamed of. But what I find interesting about that, maybe some of you guys can relate. If you've ever been through a program and either you're the one who got results and there was other people who didn't, or maybe you didn't get results and others were and you weren't sure why. And as I look back on this, I realized that it's because of my dedication to the personal development side in order to implement, take the behavior and embody it. And so it's so important to, to do. And I'm so happy that I spent you know, a good chunk of that is on personal development work, at least a hundred grand, right? In, in regards to that, but allowed me to even take better, just be better at the business stuff that I was learning too, in, in every step of the way. And so, yeah, I, I agree with Andrew. The, the, I mean, that's why, you know, literally on the golf course, I, I still think I was the first person. In, I, you gotta tell me, I think I was the first person in founding father second. Oh man, I got to take that for this. But regardless, I was like, yeah, I'm in. Especially since you know, now that we're talking about that, I had been looking and I never found something that mixed the idea of brotherhood, business and energy ever, right? And I'm the type of person who usually when I go to masterminds, like I'll go, I'll get the information and I'll get out. However, this has been really one of the first masterminds I've been a part of where I don't think I've missed a Tuesday call in a year, right? And they're not at my favorite time of day at all. It's my least favorite time of day to be on calls, to be honest. But um, I haven't missed it because it not only did I get amazing information and insights, but the brotherhood and the energy that I felt from coming off of the calls was just absolutely amazing and incredible, right? And it also led me to be accountable because every week we're talking about, you know, what are we doing here? I mean, literally over the last four months, I've made some enormous, enormous business changes and, and shifts in life. And the only place that I really had to talk about it actually was on the founding fathers because it's, I mean, family, friends don't understand it. Ha quick raise of hands for individuals who have got family or friends who don't understand the path of your journey on, right? Like almost all of us, right? I'm, I'm serious. Like most of my best friends at this point come from the masterminds, come from stuff. Like I invited Andrew to my wedding, you know, we met in circles, you know, that type of stuff. So um, I'm glad you brought up the, the accountability portion and just this, the uniqueness of this, this group. And I can't say enough about it because there's nothing like this out there. Like it doesn't exist. Like you've got individuals, you know, and Andrew's done amazing work in business. So he's not just a spiritual, you know, you know, inside internal, you know, personal development type coach. He's got that side to him at an incredible degree, but he's also got the business side. So it can bring this roundedness together because while we just spend a lot of time talking on the personal stuff, don't get us wrong. Like you got to get your money figured out, right? Like no question about it. Finances are an important part of life. If you spend all your time thinking about finances and getting there, it's hard to do the inner work. So having that combination together, game changer and being around other people who are killing it in business. Oh my gosh. I'm going to keep going. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And the big shift for me over the past year and a half that I would like to invite you guys into shifting into is that it's about the internal and not about the external. And um, that I've been able to develop a really good vision for Masters of Fate and the other companies that we're building. And I've been able to attract top quality talent onto the team from there because it's super unique and from my own vision, my own story. And that wouldn't have happened if I hadn't done the internal work. If I had continued down the path of doing the click funnels thing and funnel hacking, it would have never been unique. Um, and that's a place to start. Um, but when we go inwards and do the internal work and build out the, uh, the, the personal systems and actually start moving from our values and defining who we are to our vision, what impact we want to make in this world, then we're able to create a really unique vision for our own business and we're able to attract top quality talent. 
And like, it really just comes down to that, doing the internal work, creating our own stories from things that we've overcome and things that we've experienced. Um, and also just learning the skill set of influence that can come from and persuasion, like that can come from uh, uh, sales and from marketing, but also studying people that are like Chris Moss, like great negotiators, um, or like Eli Wild, one of the best at presenting on stage, where if we just work on ourselves and know where we're at, what really lights us up, where we want to go, and develop the skill set of influence from there. Um, that that just changes the whole game and simplifies life. So, do you want to add anything to that? I could add a lot of persuasion. You know that. Um, yeah, I mean, the, the only thing I, was, I, I agree with 100% with everything Andrew said. And speaking of influence, persuasion, sales, the most important person that you need to learn how to sell is yourself, this mind. If we can't control and tame this mind up here, then we're never going to be able to fully be able to influence and persuade others, right? And life is about influence. And I don't mean this in like a, you know, a negative manipulation style. I mean, this is, you know, getting impact, getting them to make the best decision for themselves, having the deepest relationship, letting people know that you want to help them, things like that. And it starts with, you know, calming and talking through the internal mind. And it can only be done by actually getting to know yourself and spending time doing this internal work. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And when we have that vision and, and we uh, are aligned with our values and have really good energy and have energy rituals in our lives, we start to attract more of those things into our lives instead of buying another coaching program or buying another mastermind and trying to extract strategies and tactics and thinking, I need to do, 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 instead of, I, okay, I know where I'm at. I know where I want to go. I can be and kind of follow those little nudges um and attract more instead of just trying to consume more strategies and tactics mm -hmm. so yeah, yeah. beautiful else? love it it looks like we got some people who want to want to share sweet uh have a look oh that's yali thanks raul um <clears throat> so what uh what questions do you have either around business systems or personal systems right now what pops where are you currently at uh in developing developing these things for your personal life or your business Drop down below. Um, don't be shy guys i don't got we got i know some people have some questions right personal business you know how these things apply i know michael does i know josh does with that amazing beard yeah. Uh, I could ask a question. Yeah. Um, let me think of a question, but let, but I'll definitely ask you a question. <laughs> um, how would, what would you say would be like the best way to, you know, to like present your, yourself and your skill sets to, you know, because as I started using, you know, Airtable and as I started, you know, developing, you know, a lot more of my skill sets over the last, you know, few years. Um, Airtable has, you know, like we're all said, has shown me a lot and has offered a lot through organization um, and has like really taken a lot of, you know, I, I used to have that fatigue at the, the middle of the day, just trying to remember all the things that I had to do and, you know, trying to get all of the stuff that I do for work and things like that done. And, and then as I started using Airtable, it started, you know, making things so much more easier. Now I'm able to work, you know, 10, 15 hours instead of just like five or six without getting tired. So it, it, it makes things a lot easier. But I guess what my question is, is like, now that I've seen that dramatic like shift, and I know that my skill sets are like now from a five to a 10, how would you go about like, you know, presenting yourself? So now you can like start taking on more tasks throughout your day, like to, to get other people to see that, hey, you have, you know, the availability, but you also have the skill sets to be able to, you know, offer more time to them, if that makes sense. Uh, can I ask you a, a follow-up question there? I don't like to, you know, speculate on things without knowing the full story. When you say take on more tasks, are you talking about work? Are you talking about, you know, working with somebody or for somebody? Um, are you talking about for yourself? Talk to me a little bit more. About yeah, that. for for somebody, because um, I work with a, another um, movement as well. Um, and I want to be able to take on more clients, like 
because of what I do. I do a lot of social media work. I do a lot of graphic design, but, um, you know, I have a daughter and I want to bring more income in, you know, the income I make now isn't at the level that I can support her without, you know, having that stress. And it was funny because you mentioned it earlier, you know, how many of us have like that financial stress and it keeps us from doing the inner work. And that's where I'm at right now. Like I have all these tools. I've been doing breathwork meditation and, you know, so many deep inner like healing journeys, but the financial part is the part in my life where I'm like, you know, I only make this, you know, X amount of dollars a month and my bills are like, you know, double that. So I want to be able to take on more clients and, you know, be able to, to take myself to that next level. So with the organization that I've taken from Airtable, I used to think I don't have the time to do that. But now that I have Airtable, I see that I have so much more time to do that. So that's pretty much how I want to like, you know, I want to take myself to that level. Uh, first off, uh, dude, amazing job just adopting the Airtable and those systems and just having everything out in front of you um, and just working on that. Like that's, that's awesome. And I had similar experience where, especially with the, the tasks list and to-do list, so easy to see where it's like, oh, this is just a little bit of energy and it's only going to take 10 minutes. I've been putting it off for so long. I'm just going to do it. And just having that right in front of me has been so helpful to get those little open loops that have been in the back of my mind for so long, just out on the air table and be like, oh, this is nothing cool. Get it done. Like, I, I love that. Um, and with your question, what came to mind first is just with your vision, constantly sharing your vision with people and constantly sharing what skill sets you're really good at and how you can provide the help. Um, it's crazy once, um, once we create our life vision and share that with other people, how many opportunities uh, just arise. And we don't know the potential person until we're sharing each other's vision. So asking them, hey, what's your life vision? Like, what are you trying to get out of this life? What's your mission? And then, um, and then they'll typically ask it back and opportunities just pop up when we have a rock solid vision and we talk about our visions with other people. Yeah. Yeah. And that's first off, I applaud you for being vulnerable on the call. That's amazing. You're I'm sure you're not the only person on this call who's in that financial spot. So kudos to you. That's very strong. And this level of confidence you just displayed coming on here is from a tactical standpoint, how I would approach the owner of the other company. There's two things that every owner is looking for. Can you help save them time? Can you help make them money, right? This is speaking from a, a very financial direct model. And so if you are able to take on more clients, if you have more work, number one, ask them for more clients. How can I take on more clients? What can I do to help you? What can I do to make your life easier? What can I do here? Just continue to ask, show up, ask, ask, ask. That's number one. That's easy, immediate. You can do that tomorrow. Number two, start thinking in terms of, okay, I'm doing social media but how much revenue am I bringing in? The moment that you can tie your skill set to more revenue for the business, you basically rip, pull the hand back and you, they have to pay you more money, right? It's why salespeople tend to make the most money because they bring in revenue, right? And so the more that you can connect what you do, and you don't have to be in sales, by the way, to make more money. You can do this from a lot of levels. We have CSMs mm -hmm. that have made a bunch more uh, social media people, ad buyers, but the more that you can tie what you do to them making more revenue, ask them for commissions on top of that, right? Talk to them about, hey, how do I make you more money? How do I make you more money? How do I make your life easier? And so that's a tactical level. And I want to double down on what Andrew said. From an outside level, start sharing a vision, start what you want to do, because then you can also start to potentially attract other opportunities. If for whatever reason, the place that you're working at doesn't appreciate that, doesn't respect you, anything along those lines. Does that make sense? Two things. Yeah, absolutely. Ask for more. What can I do to help you? What can I take on? I've got more time. And two, begin to really associate and connect yourself with what activities in the business make the company money and how can I bring the company more money, right? That's just the direct path to more cash, right? And then just remember this. This is a saying that I've lived by for a very long time, even before I was making any money. And I was, you know, had times where I was massively in debt and, and all that stuff, right? And that is that you will always be paid in direct proportion to the amount of value that you provide combined with the difficulty in replacing you. There's two things there. You will always be paid in direct proportion to the amount of value that you provide combined with the difficulty in replacing you. And that goes for both entrepreneurs on this call as well as individuals who are working within teams and growing. Awesome, awesome, appreciate it fellas.
Dude, great question. Great question. Um, <clears throat> and real quick, I know we've talked a lot about uh, personal systems and uh, and setting up Airtable and the Life Mastery app and all that. Um, if you guys want the opportunity to do that with uh, Larry Antiporta here, um, who has been through the Brotherhood, has set it all up for himself, um, and just joined as a member of our team and advisor, uh, and go deep on that and really set up your values and have a sounding board for yourself to share your values with, uh, with Larry and get feedback on them and your vision and just make little tweaks and also set up uh, the air table properly. Um, we have a link here to do that. Boom. And I will drop it down below. Um, and like Michael said, it's just like, once you have these systems set up, it's incredibly valuable. Um, there you I go. think also, uh, I think Jason has a question. He has his hand up. I love it. Um, and uh, the link is dropped down below that will connect to Larry. I would love to bring Larry on to just introduce himself real quick. So when you guys get on the call with him, you're not like, who the fuck is this guy? <laughs> so <laughs> Larry, if you want to hop on. What's up, y'all? Just want to appreciate and acknowledge every single one of you guys for showing up, you know, taking an hour of your day to really like listen to the gems with Nick. Andrew is like, you know, that's a big deal. So I'm Larry. I'm actually a brother as well as one of the, you know, lead vision guru guys on this team. That's like how, how I like to actually describe myself because when it comes to vision and values, I think it's one of the most important things, especially as men trying to get to the next level that we need to get very clear on. So for someone out there who was maybe like me when I first started this brotherhood, had a lack of clarity, was just really burnt out and not at peace with where I was in, in life, then just book out that call. I'm here to support you guys. I want to help you guys get that clarity, get that vision mapped out. And if you guys need even help with the system, streamlining all that, I'll get you as well set up with that. So hope to see some of you guys soon. I'm really looking forward to really just have that chat, how I can support you. And we'll chat here soon. Cheers. Thanks, Larry. I didn't, yeah, we sent over a 60 minute link. So you guys will be able to go super deep with him. I don't know how many spots he'll have uh, for that with it being 60 minutes. I thought we were going to send over a 30 minute one. So book that in now <laughs> and go deep with Larry. Um, and then I believe Josh, you had a question, my man. Sorry, can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. It's, it's kind of more of an observation and maybe a little question too. Um, I appreciate this kind of stuff because a lot of the things I didn't really understand, right? Even by going through this challenge and stuff too, I started a business and I started it for what I've done my whole life, right? Because of, oh, I could do it or my buddy was doing it. It's easy to start up, low overhead, all that kind of stuff. And I set it all up, got the LLC, got insured, got everything. And then for some reason, after going through these kinds of stuff with you guys and learning about vision and our goals and that kind of stuff, I decided that it wasn't for me. And I didn't know how that worked. Right. Like, um, so anyway, it looks like somebody dropped or I dropped. Sorry. Um, so anyway, it was just something that um, it's been good for me to be able to fill that and to be able to say, hey, I don't have all the answers, but I'm taking a step back. And just like some of the other guys talking about financially and stuff like that, too. And I know that'll come. You know, if I get honed in on those values and the different things. So I'm excited to dig deeper on that kind of stuff, too. So I know what I'm doing and doing it for the right reasons. And, you know, and maybe to have other people to um, remind us of those strengths and everything, too, that we have. So anyway, I'm excited for that process, too, because even not knowing exactly what it is, I want to do it the right way this time instead of keep going and repeating the different things so I can get more satisfaction and maybe um, so I guess kind of the question, not really a question, I guess it's the realization is it's, it's good to have a sounding board. It's good to have people that are wanting the same types of stuff. And it gives me hope, even though I don't have all those answers and know exactly what that next business is going to be, but to go inward first, and then I can be able to find out more how I can go serve and do others. So I just want to say that, and I appreciate it. And I appreciate that journey. I love it. Thank you, Josh. Um, and this is something that we want to bring to uh, education and the younger people with creating their own values and like um, 
there's been a falling off from religion over the past hundred years where people attained their meaning through religion and afterlife and that sort of stuff. Now there's so many people that don't have that. So attaining meaning through our own selves and making an impact on other people um, and creating our own, own values and vision and knowing that we can change and we can grow and we can, and the only gap is where we're at to where we wanna go, our skill sets and uh, working on those. So this is a big thing that we don't want people to get to like their late years and not fully grasp onto, I know who I am, I know where I wanna go and I just wanna build the skill sets to get there. Like that's what we really wanna share uh, in the educational space at a younger, like getting in younger. So. Are you going to say something? No, I just wanted to I applaud you. Uh, Josh, I love it. Insanity is the doing the same thing over and over again, right? You talked about not doing repeating actions and hopefully you sidestep the landmine here by doing that, right? And I applaud you for maybe you don't know, but you know this is in the path and that saves so much time, effort and energy and it can only be done by this, this type of work. So mm -hmm. amazing share. Thank you. Thank you, buddy. I think Jason has his hand raised and if you guys have any questions, you can drop them in the chat as well. Would it Anything that pops top of mind, just drop it in the chat. What's up, guys? Uh, again, I appreciate you, Andrew. I appreciate you guys coming up here. I appreciate the conversation. Um, but I'm also, <laughs> like, upset, not with you, but with, um, I guess, myself. Because, like, the, what, a lot of stuff that you brought up was, like, okay, like, you're searching for, like, these programs and stuff and whatnot and you keep asking yourself I guess so like I guess if my question is because like even in with the five-day challenge I haven't been able to I can't say not take advantage of it or do it or bring myself to finish the process or go through it and halfway through I was almost like well this challenge isn't for me maybe I just failed myself um, it's that motivation to get there to get started is there I guess if, if I had a question for you is there something I can do to get to that first step to make that to go and start uh, putting that discipline on myself? Um, because, like, me and Andrew would have like one on one chat about like I have multiple choices and different programs, uh, and I just can't pull the trigger on anything. What's right for me, uh, even in my financial life, I stay challenged. You're talking about values, and then I'm like completely lost. I've never asked myself these questions, and like threw me off. Like I literally thought, but like, this is not pointed at a guy like me. I'm just like this small fry, single person business kind of thing. Uh, and so like I beat myself up, and I knew that was like that. And I saw that like accountability for sure. Um, I don't know. I guess maybe I need someone else to be accountable to try to hold myself accountable too. But like it's that first big step to get there, I guess. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> if that makes sense, I kind of ramble. So. Yeah, dude, thank you for your vulnerability. And I'm sure people here that feel the same way because uh, this is new and this is looking inwards and this is the tough work, but the super meaningful work. Um, and uh, like everybody's saying in the chat, Michael even said, I'm here to hold you accountable, brother. Um, so that's why we have the brotherhood. And that's why we have the Facebook group inside of the five day challenge for people to hold each other accountable, um, especially to the inner work. And with the trainings and everything, um, you, you just need to create version one. And my version one of my values and of my vision I, I'll be honest, Jason, they were shit. They did, they were great. Um, but it's what will happen is when we put our mind on focusing on these things and asking ourselves, what are my values? What is my vision? And continually ask that, um, things will pop up in life and be like, oh, wait, that's one of my values. And then you, you can use the app um, which I highly recommend, or you can just have a section in your notes. That's where I started, where like, these are my values in my notes. And then um, when something would pop up and be like, oh, I really resonate with that, that might be one of my values. It's a continuous thing, 
but you just need to put down a version one and done is better than perfect. It can, it, it, it might not resonate right away, but over time when you chip away at it in everyday life, you'll be like, oh, this is me, this is me, this is me. As long and as I you keep, have somewhere to go back to. And I keep going back into like, you know, that imperfect action, you know what I mean? Like, I'm always that guy, like, I need to organize and get things right before I release it to the public or something like that, you know what I mean? Um, and like, I want to try, like, I want to do a podcast, but like you see the shirts in the background, like I'm trying to do my clothing thing. Um, but like, I have a clothing store. I have an online clothing store with like eight to 10 designs, but I want to add more. So literally no one, yeah. just because like, I'm not. Like, Nick's got, Nick's I, got I got a few things to share really quick, Jason, on this. <laughs> uh, again, appreciate you sharing. I already knew before you what you just said was going to pop up. The individual has to have everything figured out in their mind before they're willing to take action. And so my only, you know, accountability is the truth. This is all facts. But the big thing that I share to individuals who have your type of thinking, my wife thinks exactly like you and that type of stuff. Again, I have everything figured out, right? Commit to one step, right? If that commitment is just commit to one call with Larry. Don't worry about the rest. Don't worry about everything else. It's just one step at a time. I'm a big believer in the old, you know, or, or it's commit to the down the app, right? Whatever it might be for you, but like commit to one thing and then start there. And that's what starts to build momentum because I promise you right now, you're never going to have it all figured out. You're never going to be able to see around all the corners. No one does. And it's really just about commitment. The journey of a thousand miles really does begin with that one step. And it's okay to not know everything that's going to happen. Nobody does. We're humans. Like we don't even know if the sun's going to rise tomorrow. I mean, we're pretty sure it's going to, but we don't know what the hell's going on, right? So that's why I'm just chunk it down to one little commitment thing and don't worry too much about what it needs to look like or how it has to work, right? So I would just throw that word out there, commit. I got you. Yeah. I definitely get analysis paralysis where like there's so much and then like I just freeze up and I'm like, yep. you know, I'm just going to hang out in bed and just binge mm -hmm. or whatever. And that's again, like I know, I know these things. That's the issue is just that click, I guess. One thing at a time, <laughs> commit. Yep. Yeah. And, and one thing to, to Nick's point, uh, the journey of a thousand miles starts with one step. But what I've learned is let's make sure that we're taking that step towards what we actually want mm -hmm. um, and make sure we're going in the right direction. That's why having our life vision or at least version one of our life vision is so important to make sure we're on that right path. So yep. that would be my first step if I were if I were you, Jason. Yeah. Thank I you, Bruce. And I think this is a, a good time to bring Noah Joy on. Um, he joined our brotherhood uh, about two and a half months ago, and it would be good for you guys to. He he's gone through the vision process, the values process, the beliefs process, and bring him on for his experience with going through that and just attacking it. Awesome. Thanks for the introduction, Andrew. Yeah, so as Andrew mentioned, I joined back in about April uh, of this year. And um, it was actually just through th some mutual friends that I caught wind of this uh, Masters of Fate group. And I've never been part of a brotherhood before. Um, so coming down and moving down to San Diego, I was looking for a friend network and a community that could really push myself in all areas of life, right? So I think everyone wants that core group that can kind of hold you to your highest self and, and help you grow. And as I learned more about the program and some of the, or the, um, sort of the group and some of the discovery calls, um, it looked like really it had it all, you know, some relationships and finance and energy and mindset. So it's really like the full package. Um, and I think that's rare, probably in a lot of these masterminds, you know, usually it's focused on business. Um, and I'm really focused on being like a well-rounded individual, right? So I don't want my energy and my mindset to, to be sacrificed by my, my professional life, and my business. So yeah, as, as I've kind of immersed into uh, the brotherhood, um, I've had really, really good um, or, or better understanding of myself. So as Andrew um, mentioned, you know, what's at the core is really getting that vision clear, um, you know, and getting your values and your beliefs clear. And he set up some really nice prompting questions around those. So I think often when, you know, you're like, oh yeah, what's my vision? Like, it seems like a, a huge task, right? Same with beliefs and values, you know, it's like, what's the framework for thinking about these things? How do you even define your beliefs, your values, right? And, and you know, there is, you know, good, good frameworks to work under and good questions to ask yourself. And I think from that activity, it's really like an uncovering of self. So all this stuff is, you know, within you. 
Um, but when you bring it to light and you bring it to the front, you, you start to make different decisions about how you go about in your life and uh, what you drive towards and where you spend your energy and where you spend your time. Um, and so I think that's been some of the largest impact for me is really just getting clear, um, you know, on those areas of life. And we've, we've had the opportunity to, to meet over, you know, several weeks and various calls. And in those calls, you know, we have focuses on relationship or mindset or energy or finances. And with that, there's expert speakers and there's, there's people that uh, like, you know, obviously the brotherhood where you can connect with the brotherhood and exchange ideas and philosophies and kind of grow together. And it really just increases like your consciousness and, and um, your knowledge in those areas. And, you know, with that, your perspective shifts, right? So you start to view, you know, everything around you a little bit different. And, you know, I think that's hugely impactful uh, just for changing the character, right? And being the best version of yourself. Um, we just met up in San Diego in person this last weekend. So this is the first in-person event. And obviously you get to connect over Zoom and get to know each other, uh, but it's nothing like being in person, right? And there's 25 guys out there. Um, we spent three days together and uh, yeah, it was just an amazing experience, you know, like the way that they, they orchestrated uh, sort of the days and the activities, um, you know, it was all intentional. Uh, they made it fun. Uh, it's a great opportunity to like connect with a bunch of badasses. Um, so no matter what stage you are in life, you know, if you're, you're thriving and you're trying to grow um, or if you're early on in uh, your entrepreneurial journey, like there's, there's, there's people to support you and you can support others. You know, there's just like a wealth of knowledge across this group. And so like any problem or issue or objective that you're working on, chances are like there's someone in this community who's, who's worked through it before. And so you get to leverage that um, as well as, you know, you get to help out other people, which feels super good too. So, you know, whatever facet of life that they're working on, um, you know, you can support uh, and vice versa. So I think that's absolutely huge. Um, so yeah, like, I don't know, do you guys have any questions? Um, I also was, I joined at 1240, so I didn't really hear all the prior conversation. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to kind of share my experience so far. Thank you so much, buddy. Um, yeah, and if you guys have any questions uh, for Noah here, uh, feel free to drop them in the chat. How long are you gonna be here, Noah? I can chill for, you know, another probably 15, if that works. Cool, perfect. Yeah. 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 Sweet. Um, and we'll take one more share from, from Dano. Uh, Dano's been in the Brotherhood for about uh, four months now. Um, and he, <laughs> he shows up to every call. He rocks out the air table. Um, Dano. <laughs> absolutely what's up guys um yeah i tuned in here and you'll probably see my eyes going back and forth back and forth that's just because i'm so immersed in the air table right now as we're speaking <laughs> it, it's so funny um i don't know about you guys but when i started this entrepreneurial journey of mine you know you know, I was passionate and I was good at what I was doing and I was good at you know creating conversations and taking people and sending them there and doing all the fun stuff right but when it came to like business operations, uh, SOPs, just like, man, it, that was just not my zone of genius, right? Bro, I got so many damn sticky notes like all over my desk. Um, and, and that's how I was living and that's how I was operating my business for like the first two years, um, just because I didn't know what I didn't know, right? So when it came to, you know, organi organizing um, everything in my business uh, from a CRM um, KPI trackers, even especially, I'll get into this in a minute, values and vision. Um, I just didn't have like a clear connection to everything, at least in my forefront. Um, and that created some friction, friction that was really unconscious for myself. And so um, I originally joined this brotherhood because I've never been a part of a brotherhood. You know, I've definitely invested in myself with coaches, courses, books but I've never really had like, like a container where we can all lean on each other. Like all the coaches I've invested in the past, you know, we jump on the call, we learn something and there's no connection with each other. We hop off and I won't even talk to the people for like a, a week or two weeks or whenever. There's just no connection. 
man, Noah, dude, uh, I, I met this guy this past weekend and and he can attest like there's so much love for each other in this brotherhood and and that's why I originally joined because um I knew I needed something but I really wasn't sure what I what I needed um and so so the connection with each other is just massive add to that I didn't know that we would be getting this uh life mastery app I had no idea about it. Andrew just threw it on us and it's like, hey, I'm designing this app. It'll be ready in a couple months. You're going to love it. I'm like, I don't know what that is, but that sounds cool. And then once he unveiled it to us, it was like all my answers were, all my questions were answered, everything I needed in my business. Like I'm literally here in my air table connecting my KPI tractor to my CRM back to my vision, like I mentioned before. Um. Our brains are literally computers and we all have, you know, a hundred tabs open at one time, but here everything is connected where, um, every day, every single task I do, every single goal, every single goal I plan, I can filter it and sort it and connect it to my greater vision, my outcomes, um, skill sets that I'm proficient at as well skill sets that I want to work on and skill sets that I want to work on I can connect the, those two people resources books uh coaches Andrew Dakota Nick bro I've got you bro Nick uh connected to so many different things here with business organization That's you don't even know about yeah. you don't even know about yeah. um I've got Rahul in here bro yeah. and um and this just allows me to have more clarity so that I can continue doing what I'm good at in my zone of genius, and I can make it easier for myself to work on the things that I want to grow to be a better person and to help my future self. Man, yeah, I love it. And I just got, I got to chime in there with the love for the brotherhood and the values and all this stuff. You guys heard a bit of my story before. If you guys are on the fence, you just heard from Real Life Brothers. I was out there this weekend. I was doing ice baths with everyone. We were Wim Hof and up on mountaintops and breath work and all water balloon fights, but also just getting down in its core. It was so freaking incredible. Noah, Dano, it was so good to meet you guys uh, in person out there. Um, so if you guys are in, like, if you guys have any questions on things, just go talk to Larry. There's no, uh, there's no, nothing's going to come from it other than you get more clear in your vision, your values, right? Take that next step, have a conversation with them. You don't have to commit to anything other than that, but I highly recommend it because I promise you it's life changing. And as I look back on why, you know, I've, I've, I've done okay from a financial standpoint, right? It's all relative, obviously, but I've done okay. And when I look back, the biggest mover by far was doing this work and understanding who I am, what I wanted to be and having these values. So definitely if you guys have, if you're on the, or if you're just want to talk more about this stuff, talk with Larry, like it's totally worth it. Love the brotherhood, love all these people. And there's nothing like this anywhere. I can promise you. Like that's, that's why I'm here too, you know, so. Yeah. I love it. Thank you, buddy. Yeah. And dude, Dano, you gave me the best analogy where you were like, we have all these tabs open in our head. And then I realized, holy crap, when we just like put something in the Life Mastery app, we close out a tab in our head. So that was, that was fucking awesome. Thank you for that. That's going in the marketing. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, that's like that second brain metaphor, right? Yeah. 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 And I guess that's one thing I didn't highlight too. Um, it's obviously been reiterated here, but it's like, yeah, getting all the values, vision, beliefs, you know, even your work stuff, your to do's, um, you know, your relationships, finances, all in one place. There's just so much value in that too. Um, often I think we use so many systems and programs. I mean, I got six messaging apps, right? So you're just <laughs> fragmented between all these different apps and checking them all. And you can imagine what that does to your efficiency. Right. And so, if you start to consolidate and you know you got a business air table and a life air table um and you build those out you know it's just it it just makes you so much more calm and at ease i think to, to have it in a single place yeah dude thank you so much um and love for you guys to close out with uh what what's one thing let's end it on gratitude what's one thing that you're grateful for right now okay right, and we'll put it in the chat and just have a little gratitude list love raul connection nice yes one thing we're grateful for three boys let's go jacob how old are they noah the brothers 
Uh, the youngest just turned four, and then uh, I've got a five-year-old and a seven-year-old. So that's the future I'm trying to build. Heck yeah. I, I, uh, I saw a quote by, I think it was Ed Milet today. He's like, basically, you, you're you something about like not being selfish. Like, you have to make your decisions now so that, you, what was it? Let me find it. Uh, one of the most insidious forms of child neglect is a parent who doesn't chase their dreams and potential. Mm -hmm. And I was like, well, okay. All right. All right. All right. All right. So mm -hmm. yeah, that's true. I got to do something. Really quick guys. I love the gratitude, but I want you guys to know something that I find really interesting. Every single gratitude around connection, it's around relationships, right? And what's the key to having the best relationships? If you have some of these things figured out, if you're able to show up as your whole authentic self, right? If you're able to have the finances figured out and you understand what you are, the values, the things that you want to be, who you want to become. So I didn't fully expect that, but I mean, literally every single one was yeah. relationship driven, which is amazing. And this is the stuff that leads you to stronger relationships as well, because you know what you're looking for and what you stand for and what you want. So mm -hmm. love it. Oh, except for that one that says my seven figure business. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Miss that one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Um, amazing guys. Uh, just reminder, the people in your life are your life. People in my life are my life. Um, and every breakthrough that I've ever gotten has come in, come through another person, another spark, whether that is directly in front of me or it's from a YouTube video or a course, it's always through other people and aligning with people that align with our values is super important. Um, we can end this or we can answer one or two more questions. Are there any juices flowing for you guys? Any questions? Jason scheduled. Let's go, Jason. Commitment, bro. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Larry is stoked. Yeah. Let's go. Yeah. I love it. All right. We'll end it there. Um, and yeah, you just dive into the trainings again um, and go through them. And the more we focus on our values, our vision, our purpose, our missions, and surround ourselves with the right people, just things start to happen. Awesome. Love you, Jacob. Love you guys.